In this short video, we're going to briefly discuss the second of four different research designs that psychological scientists use, case studies. Case studies are a little bit different than these other research designs, and they're kind of interesting. In a case study, you examine one person, or perhaps a small number of people, in extreme depth, often over an extended period of time. So in contrast to correlational and experimental designs that we're going to learn about in our next two videos, for example, case studies aren't just one quick session, one hour, you know, with each participant over many different participants, which is often the case for other research designs. Instead, in a case study, you might be working with one person or, you know, a group of 10 people or whatever for years or even decades. And there are a lot of really famous case studies. We're going to learn about some of them in this video series. For example, there's people who have had half their brains removed, and then they've been involved in case studies over many decades where researchers and scientists have tried to figure out, well, what sorts of effects does it have to remove half of someone's brain? By the way, there was a good reason this person that I'm thinking of, uh, which we will learn about later, uh, why his brain was removed, he had really severe epileptic seizures that were basically life-threatening, and this was a last resort to try and relieve the sort of dangerous effects of those seizures. But there were a lot of interesting effects on his memory and all of that, but I don't want to spoil too much, we'll get to that later. But for now, let's talk about the pros and cons of the case study research design, starting with the pros. One advantage of a case study is that they can provide existence proofs. Basically, you can document that a given psychological event or disorder can occur. You can provide proof of the existence of some sort of an event or disorder. So case studies are great for really rare disorders because think about it. If you, know, you want to do a correlational study or an experiment, typically you're going to have 50, 100, 200 people. Well, what if you're looking at a disorder that only has you know, three known cases? Well, then a case study is great to start to learn about that disorder. And some of these other research designs are either going to be impractic impractical or completely impossible. Another sort of advantage of the case study design is that you can get insights for later systematic testing. So a lot of researchers use case studies as sort of a starting point where they just want to get an overall sense of what it's like for somebody to, you know, suffer from a certain disorder and, you know, what might have caused that. You'll never know for sure, as we'll talk about in a moment, but you can start to get at some guesses of what's going on because you're really getting in depth and you're talking to someone over a long period of time, over many sessions, you're interviewing them repeatedly, all of that. So it's great for gaining insight and then you can maybe design that correlation study or that experimental study after gaining that insight. All right, last but not least, let's talk about the disadvantages of the case study design. First of all, case studies tend to be anecdotal. That is, you're primarily dealing in anecdotes. If you're, for example, working with one single person, and you know, you're seeing what you think are symptoms of maybe this disorder that you're hypothesizing exists, there's really not a good way to tell whether what you're seeing is a symptom or whether it's a personality quirk, something idiosyncratic to this specific individual that you're working with. And even if you're working with a group of people, we know that the plural of anecdote isn't fact. That is, even if you see multiple anecdotes sort of lining up with your hypotheses, that's not really proof or great evidence quite yet. And again, it's great as a starting point, but you need to do later testing to really figure out what's going on fully. And last but not least, it doesn't allow us to infer causation. A case study is great, again, for getting at what might have caused a disorder or a psychological event by digging into the history of this individual or this small group of individuals, but you don't really know for sure until, as you see later, you design an experiment 